Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In the last video, we looked at how we could use some recursive functions to do some calculations. We calculated uh, factorials. We also um, did a calculation of summing up numbers so that we could take an average. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is to take that a little bit further. So, if we go and we look at our file for averaging, uh, we had this function called read and sum, and it was supposed to read n integers and give us back uh, the sum of them. What if instead of taking just either a simple sum, well, so, so what if instead of a sum I want a product? Okay, so I want to have the product of all the numbers that are input. Well, one way to do that would be to copy eight lines, paste them, change this from read and sum to read and uh, product, product, and instead of having a plus there, we have a times. The other thing we need to change is this here, because when you're adding up a bunch of numbers, at the end you want to add zero, kind of as your base case, because adding zero is the additive identity. When you add it to something, it doesn't change anything. Now we're doing multiplication. What happens if we multiply by zero? Well, then everything becomes zero. So for multiplication, we need to change this to one, because one is the multiplicative identity. And now we could do something like, uh, well, if I were to call this with a product, let's actually say 2yy and p, well, product, Now, of course, for a product, you don't just want to take the average. You actually want to take a root. I'm now doing a geometric mean. And with the geometric mean, I don't need to convert this to a double. Um, OK. So. It'll read a bunch of numbers, take their sum, give you the average. It'll read another set of numbers, take their product, and give you the geometric mean of those. And if we were to run this, I'll just say three numbers. One, two, three, with an average of two. 1, 2, 3, with a geometric mean of 1.81712, etc. Um, okay, so let's go back and let's look at these functions. And I've said before, copying and pasting is generally a bad thing. If you can, you'd like to avoid it. Now, in this case, we did change some things. Um, changing the name really wasn't that significant. That that wasn't required. If I had deleted this one, I wouldn't need to change the name. There were really two things I had to change here. One was I had to change the plus to a times, and the other was I had to change the zero to a one. Okay. So really, this function and this function are exactly the same, except that they return a different value on the base case, and they combine things in a different way. And that's the only difference between them. That's the only real change of substance that I made when I did this cut and paste. And that is inefficient. Okay? If, if I were to find that I had other things, so maybe I wanted to do um, a root mean square. So I want to take the sum of the squares instead. Uh, or, or maybe I wanted to combine these instead of having a product or a sum, I wanted to take the min or the max, something like that. Well, you can imagine all types of things that we might want to do in order to combine these numbers. And the problem is that completely copying and pasting and redoing the code is inefficient. So what I'm going to show you here, and in some ways this is a bit more advanced technique, and um, 
you know, the, you, your instructor might not be ready for you to, to deal with this. But we've learned all of the pieces for this. It's just putting them together. I want to throw in one more piece to this. I want to write a recursive function like this, but I'm going to use the piece of a um, of a function literal or pass in a function. So this is a value, the base case, the zero or the one. So let's do actually let's uh, eight y y p read and how about combine. So we're going to read in things, but I want to pass in a little bit of additional information. I want to pass in a base case, which is the int, since this whole thing returns an int. This is the value that gets returned when you get to the bottom. And so I'm going to change from the 1 or the 0 in the sum to this variable base. And then the next thing that I want to pass in is a, is a function to combine things. Um, I'll call it combine func. Now, what should this function do? Well, it's supposed to take two ints. Down here, one would be the grade that was read in, and the other one would be the re result of the rec recursive call, which is also an int. And it's supposed to return to us something the whole thing can return, which is an int. So the signature for this is int int rocket int. Okay, so that's the type of function that I need to pass in. And where do I use that in the function? Well, it goes in place of the add or the multiply. So I'm going to put inside of here combine func. So the idea is I can pass in whatever base I wanted. If I were taking the sum, I could pass in a uh, zero. If I were pass, if I were doing a product, I'd pass in a one. Um, if I were taking the min or the max, I might pass in int dot max value or int dot min value, whatever the opposite is, the thing that couldn't possibly be the min or the max. And then when it comes down time to combine them, instead of using an operator like the plus or the minus, I am going to call this combine func, whatever that function is, and apply it to the two arguments. So let's see how this can be used. I'm actually going to come down here and comment out the main part of the script so that you can see this in the REPL. And then we'll go back and I will change the other two things that I did so that they do the same thing as read sum and read product, but they do it by using this new version. So I load in all my functions. Let's see if we type them correctly. Yes. So how do we call, so just to make sure this works, read and sum three, one, two, three, gives us back six because that's the sum of those. And we could do the same type of thing for the, the read and product. Read and combine. Well, I need how many things to read? I'm gonna go with three because I want something that's fairly short. The base, well, if I'm doing a sum, I'll go with zero, and then a function. Now, I'll write this the first time using the function syntax that we talked about the first time. I'm going to say, I have a function, it takes two arguments. I'm calling them x and y here, and it gives back x plus y. Let's put some spaces in there. Maybe I'll help you read what's going on. And now if I type in one, two, three, Oh, hey, look at that. No? We got an extra one. Read and combine. Zero. Oh, I see why. It's still calling read and product. So when I call this with n minus one, I'm going to use the same base and the same combined func. Okay. Let's load it back in. And let's run it. One, two, three, with a sum of six. Otherwise, I got one plus, and then it went to the product, and so it said two times three, and that's why I got seven. Um, 
If I wanted this to do multiplication, I would change this to that and change the base to one. One, two, three, which also happens to have a product of six. Uh, what happens if I do multiplication with a base of zero? One, two, three, well, zero times anything is zero. So that's what I get. Um, yeah, so, so this one function, the read and combine, is far more flexible. This is, by Scala standards, a little bit verbose, though. One thing that you'll note about this is that I didn't say x is an int, y is an int. When I introduced function literals, I showed you these, but I said that in most cases, when you use it, you don't have to include that. And you might wonder, well, why not? Well, because Scala can look at this x and y, but this here says it's going to take a function that is int int and gives you back int. It knows those two arguments are an int because we told it right here. So if this is going to work in there, it has to be two ints. Because this is something that you do fairly commonly in Scala, it turns out there is an even shorter syntax for this that uses underscores. Now, you can only use this in certain situations, but you can think of the underscore as saying some variable. Okay. So instead of saying I have an x and a y and I want to give back you know, x plus y up here, I can say something plus something. Okay. One, two, three, and it works. The limits on when you can use the short syntax. For example, if I wanted to say the function of something squared, I can't use this because it sees the first underscore as the first argument and it sees the second underscore as the second argument. If you only have one underscore, you're dealing with a function of one argument. If you have two, it's two. If you have three, it's three, so on. So the arguments have to appear exactly once and in order for you to use the shortcut underlying syntax. But as you can see here, it made this really nice and short. Four, five, or three, four, five gives us 60, okay? So you can pass in a little function here, and this short syntax makes it possible to, uh, to get a lot more power. So now I don't have to write new versions for everything that, uh, that I want to do. This won't give me the ability to combine uh, squares. Actually, I guess it will. Let's try that. So I had said something about doing the sum of the squares. So just to make sure. So the sum of the squares for 1, 2, 3 should be 1 plus 4 plus 9. We expect 14. Now, the, it turns out that sum of the squares is something I can't do with this short notation. I have to go back up and pull in the long notation because I want x times x. I want to take the first argument and square it and then add in the, the second argument. Um, and at the base case, that second argument here is going to be the base, which is zero, since it doesn't add anything. So if I hit enter, one, two, th three, I get 14. It did the one plus the four plus the nine. And now I could just combine that with a call to math.square root, and I could get the standard deviation. So our this version right here, by passing in a function, is fundamentally significantly more powerful than what we had before. And now this is an idea that will probably take a while for you to wrap your head around, but you can play with uh, doing different things using uh, something like this read and combine and trying to see what different types of functionality you can get. How would you do min? How would you do max to find the largest number or the smallest number? Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you again soon.